When you talk about the legendary 429 Ford V8 engine, many famed hero cars may come to mind, like the iconic Ford Mustang that tore up the drag strip with varying packages of the famed 429, while the Torino Talladega and Mercury Cyclone Spoiler dominated NASCAR with the same 429 power plant. But what if we told you that there was another one? A different, less common two-door coupe that packed the high-powered 429 V8 under the hood. A certain Raider that combined power with class and style in a big-bodied coupe package. Today, we will discuss the big block-powered Mercury Marauder X100 and why it seems to be the lost treasure of the 60s and 70s. If you thought the Marauder name was exclusively held for the high-performance version of the Crown Vic from the early 2000s, then you would be mistaken. The Marauder itself first appeared in the early 1960s as a trim package for the Mercury S55. This would be the first generation of the Marauder nameplate, which was made from 1963 all the way up until 1965. Then, the second generation Mercury Marauder was born for the 1969 model year which coincided with a key trend in the automotive market from the mid to late 1960s, where the demand for large luxury coupes began to skyrocket. You had yourself an array of fast luxury cruisers for the esteemed gentlemen hitting the market all at the same time. Soon the likes of Oldsmobile, Buick, and Chrysler began to fill the space with cars of their own, like the Toronado, the Riviera, and the New Yorker respectively. Mercury wanted a slice of that pie as well. So work began to build a new two-door coupe with a name very familiar to Mercury, the Marauder, as this new Marauder would also give birth to the X100 trim package, which was the new king of luxury sports coupes. Upon its release in 1969, the Mercury brochure said it best when describing the X100 as saying, for when luxury just isn't enough. The Marauder epitomizes the classic muscle car aesthetic with its broad, boxy front end, featuring cool retractable headlights and an expansive grille that extends across the car's squared-off lines. The Marauder's hood, comparable in size to some modern compact sedans, leads to a chrome-edged windshield that accentuates the solid hardtop roof design. Now, the Marauder itself was a bit of a parts bin special in some certain ways. It shared the same front end as the Mercury Marquis, but it used the roof line from a Ford Galaxy sports roof, which meant that from the front, the Marauder was pretty much indistinguishable from a Marquis. But from the side profile or a rear end view, you could absolutely start to see the differences become evident between the two cars. And the X100 package had further differences. It also featured fender skirts, five-spoke 15-inch wheels, and a signature trunk lid and deck that were painted in matte black or a different contrasting color that Mercury labeled the Sport Tone. This matte black scheme could be deleted for dealer credit or by ordering a vinyl roof. This trunk would then also be framed in by two large fenders that wrapped around a very 70s eight taillight design to finish off the back of the Marauder, which was particularly mean looking. The car also featured air vents on the side of the rear quarters, similar to that of the contemporary Dodge Charger. Powering the Marauder X100 was the legendary 429 Ford Big Block V8, with a bore of 4.36 inches and a stroke of 3.59 inches. The 429 itself is based on the Ford 385 engine family, which just for reference happens to be about 100 pounds lighter than the Ford 460 Big Block. Not that weight was much of a concern for the Marauder though. Packing a 4 barrel carburetor and a 10 half to 1 compression ratio, this Big Block 429 in the Marauder made 360 horsepower and a stump pulling 480 foot-pounds of torque which was more than enough to effortlessly chug this land yacht to some pretty impressive speeds. Mated to this 429 sat a C6 three-speed select shift automatic transmission. Unfortunately, there was no four-speed transmission option available for this car, and a 323 rear gear ratio 
was the sportiest available for the Marauder. This 4,500 pound street beast, all said and done, could do about a 7 second 0 to 60 time and a quarter mile time at around 16 seconds, which was nothing compared to the top dog muscle cars, but again, this was a luxury brawler. It got there a few seconds later, sure, but it got you there in a level of comfort that few could argue with. It also featured an advertised top speed of about 126 miles per hour. The Marauder was based on the same full-frame chassis as the full-size Ford sedans at the time were, with an A-arm suspension up front and a coil-over rear suspension setup with a live axle. That gave the Marauder a smooth riding suspension. With the X100, it was also possible to get an upgrade to a more competition-focused suspension setup with better springs and shocks, as well as a thicker anti-roll bar. Now, this does seem fairly useless though, but I'd love to hear your thoughts about it in the comments down below. See, the Marauder was supposed to be a comfortable and compliant cruiser with the ability to go fast in a straight line. A more performance-oriented suspension almost just seems like a way to get the Marauder to do what it's meant to do worse, which is kind of odd. Given its hefty weight of 4,500 pounds, the Marauder X100 wisely incorporated standard disc brakes at the front and drums at the rear. With the option to upgrade to power brakes for enhanced stopping capabilities, which I probably would have recommended for a 4,500 pound car. The Marauder itself was dubbed the ultimate freeway cruiser, not just for its formidable presence on the road, but also for its luxuriously comfortable and well-appointed interior. It offered a cabin lavish enough for the most discerning of occupants, presenting options between a split bench featuring foldable armrests or full bucket seats accompanied by a center console and a floor-mounted select shift gear lever. Standard fittings included a three-spoke rim blow steering wheel and a dashboard adorned with wood grade finishes and an elegantly designed instrument cluster, further enhancing its opulent interior ambiance. And with an initial price of $4,091, the Marauder X100 was priced at nearly $700 more than the comparable Ford XL sports roof with the same 429. But once you started adding options to your Marauder, many cards ended up costing over $5,000, which was a pretty big chunk of change and started to put it right up there price-wise with the Riviera and the Toronado. The Marauder X100 proved to be everything that Mercury themselves wanted on paper as the perfect middle ground between the Cougar and the much higher end Lincoln Continental Mark III. The Marauder was almost a sensory overload to the driver. It combined luxury, comfort, and power all into the spacious interior inside of the exorbitantly large two-door coupe. The only issue, though, was that, well, they didn't really sell well. In 1969, Mercury built 121,668 marquee models. That included four doors, two-door convertibles, sedans, and wagons. And in all of that mess, a total of 14,666 Marauders would be built for that first model year. And of those, only 5,635 of them were X100 cars. The following year, the Marauder sales fell to less than half of that, and a mere 2,646 of them were X100 cars. Following this drastic decline in sales in its second year, Mercury decided to take a step back from the luxury performance cars, and they opted to go further in terms of style and comfort. This was all part of a reconfigured plan to target buyers who had now been priced out of a Lincoln or a Cadillac. This in turn also ended up killing off the Marauder X100 as a result after just two years in production. The Marauder X100 was really the perfect illustration of that late 60s philosophy of bigger is better. And honestly, no one knows where it could have gone if it wasn't for the oil crisis that led to the great shrinkage of cars in the 70s. Couple that with Mercury's changing in market positioning, and it was really a death sentence for the Marauder X100, and the Marauder in general. But there's no denying it was a pretty sweet car. And today, the X100 really is kind of remembered as the super mega coupe that stands as still a pretty affordable example of the luxury and style of the late 60s. And thankfully, the Marauder name would get one final hurrah some 30-something years later, 
in the form of the 2003 to 2004 Mercury Marauder, which was a hopped up luxury Crown Vic essentially that featured the dual overhead cam 4.6 liter V8 from the Mustang Mach 1, which was a great way to pay homage to the forgotten classic. And that is the story of the Mercury Marauder X100, Mercury's forgotten battle cruiser. Thank you all for watching another episode of our Rare Cars documentary series. If you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like and also share this video with other enthusiasts. Also, please make sure that you are subscribed to the Rare Cars YouTube channel and smash that notification bell for more documentary style videos just like this on the world's most interesting cars. Until next time, enthusiasts.